Ah, the dreaded bunker shot. I get so many questions from clients, both on my online coaching program and in physical uh, lessons, people struggle with bunkers. Well, as a full-time golf coach, I find it amazing that people have so much difficulty because one of the first basics we have to do is we have to get the club under the golf ball. We don't want to hit the ball when we play a bunker shot. We want to hit under the golf ball. So we actually want to hit a little bit behind the ball. Now, as I said, I'm a full-time golf coach and guess what I see most golfers doing when they come for a golf lesson for their golf swing? They hit behind the ball and they're then hitting up on the ball through impact. But there's no problem with people hitting behind the ball when we say hit a full shot. Yet the moment they hit a bunker shot, they're hitting the ball, not behind it. Now I'd like to reverse that. I'd like to get people almost thinking about hitting a bunker shot when they're hitting their seven iron. They'd play their seven iron better. But the first thing is we don't want to hit the golf ball. We want to hit under the golf ball. If we hit under the ball, the club should not touch the ball because there's a cushion of sand between the club face and the golf ball. That stops it from going too far. My second basic is that we want to get the club accelerating through the shot. Without acceleration, and you will see it all the time, you know, that it looks a bit like this. People get up there and they have a reasonable swing and they decelerate and they stop there and they say, oh, the ball nearly came out. Well, yeah, it nearly came out, but it didn't because you didn't accelerate. So we really want to accelerate. And as Gary Player used to say, we're going to feel like we're going to strike the match. If we strike the match, to strike the match, we're accelerating through the bottom. Not incredibly fast, but there is definitely acceleration. So when we hit a bunker shot, we want to hit under the golf ball Make sure there's a cushion of sand between the face of the club and the ball, and we want to accelerate. That gets me to my third fundamental. That is, we want to use the bounce of the golf club. So the bounce of the club is this part here. So you'll see that it's lower at the back than it is at the front. The bounce of the club is there to keep the club moving. If I didn't have bounce and I had zero degrees of bounce, that leading edge would hit the sand just as I would do here and it digs in. We don't want it to dig in. We want to utilize the bounce to allow the club to keep moving. So my contact point is going to be toward the back. This is a very shallow bunker. There's not a lot of sand there, but even though there's not a lot of sand there, some people call this hard pan. This is what Melbourne bunkers are like. We still want to hit under the ball and we still want to hit back but we want to have that shallower angle of attack. Now, when we come in with a shallow angle of attack, we enable the bounce of the club to do its work. The moment I come down steep, I expose that leading edge down and off this stuff, I'm going to bounce the club off the hard pan and I'll hit a very poor bunker shot. So the secret to playing from hard pan and wet sand for that matter, is to keep that angle of attack shallow to utilize the bounce of the club. So they're my three basic fundamentals. We want to make sure that we hit under the golf ball, not the ball. We want to make sure we accelerate through the shot and we want to utilize the bounce of the club by keeping our angle of attack shallow. If we can do those three things, you're going to find you're going to hit, get much, much better in playing bunker shots. I no, just pushed that a little bit right, but it came out okay. Got in the air, no problems at all. So we got those three things working. If you want to get better at bunkers, I'm going to put a link to another video just up here that I know is going to help you improve your bunker play.